In this Marvel Snap deck guide, I'll be talking you through one of the absolute best decks in Marvel Snap's current meta, and this deck has an absolutely insane win rate across the board, it has gained me a ton of cubes, and I'm going to be taking you through it turn by turn so you can understand how it plays. Now one thing I'll mention right off the bat is if you do not have Jeff, you can substitute in Nightcrawler. Let's get started. The first thing worth noting here is that uh, over my 36 games testing the initial uh, deck, we had almost 78% win rate, 68 net cubes, which is nearly 2 cubes per game. The win rate is absolutely absolutely insane so let's actually talk it through turn one you want to play nebula into a, a location that's difficult to contest because what you want to do is you want them to not be able to play on top of the nebula which allows it to kind of rally up if you don't have nebula korg is a good secondary play now going to turn two this is where things get a little interesting now while jeff can be extremely valuable to proc the miles morales for turn six the realistic truth is that Zabu being played into a safe location is kind of what you really want to do because Zabu is just so damn good, especially with the number of four drops you have. Um, it is the priority here. If you do not have Zabu and you have Jeff, you play Jeff into an unrevealed location because he can just move. Jeff can just move if it's disadvantageous. Otherwise, maybe you're in Sanctorum and the opponent can't even get there. On turn three, you're going to play Rock Slide to disrupt their deck and start building Rocks, uh, start building Darkhawk. That is, of course, assuming that Zabu is on the board. If Zabu is not on the board, you can play Polaris into the location where Nebula is. The reason for this is because you want to pull a card that they might have played on turn one or two into that location where Nebula is because it prevents them from playing cards there. Because if you're just filling the location with ones and twos, they won't be able to play there later in the game and Nebula is going to rank up. So that's really nice about Polaris on turn three. But there is a key consideration about turn four because on turn three, you might see in the current meta a wave. And if you see wave, the secondary play is to play Polaris into a location that's not currently occupied if you suspect Galactus. The reason for this is because if you can draw their Yondu or their one drop into that location and they play their Galactus, the effect won't actually happen. You can also play Darkhawk here, but it's a little risky because it'll be vulnerable to Shang-Chi. Conversely, if you do not feel like they're playing an ongoing list, you can play Enchantress here or even Miles Morales if you played Zabu first, Rock Slide, and then now you're holding the Morales and it's like the best tempo play you have and Jeff's not on the board. Because if you're using the Polaris on turn three or four, you won't have Polaris to play on turn five, which forces the move, which allows you to play the Morales. So Morales can come out at this point if you need. Coming into turn five, this is where the deck really comes online. Essentially what you're doing here is you're playing Black Bolt. That's really what you want to do. You want to play Black Bolt. Black Bolt's going to discard a card from their hand. Unfortunately, it's usually a rock because they're drawing rocks with Zabu and Rock Slide. But regardless, you're going to discard a card and then you're also going to forcibly move Jeff. No matter what, you got to move Jeff, okay? The reason for this is because it basically allows Miles Morales to become a one drop. Stature becomes a one drop because of the discard from Black Bolt. And the result of that is you get this turn six miracle play where both Stature and Miles Morales cost one. So the play of Black Bolt and the movement of Jeff allow this. And that's why Nightcrawler represents a uh, option if you don't have Jeff, because you can move Nightcrawler on turn five, just like you're moving Jeff on turn five. So that's ideally what you want to do. If you don't have that play, if you don't have Black Bolt, for instance, and say Zabu's on the board, what you can do is you can do something like, you know, Polaris into Jeff, right? So you can play Polaris, which is going to pull a card, which is going to activate the Miles Morales anyways. So there's a couple different options you can play. And of course, every game's a little unique, right? And we can't account for everything in the guide. On turn six, this is where things get interesting. Now, generally speaking, you want to hold back the Darkhawk because it is so commonly hit by Shang-Chi. Now, the thing about this is because you're not playing like a Mystique in this deck, right? Um, so playing Darkhawk on turn six can often be advantageous because you're going to play Darkhawk, Stature, and Miles at the same time. And it's an extremely vertical setup. Um, you can go, you can spread it completely. You can put like Darkhawk in one lane and Stature and Miles in another. There's so many different options. You can place them in all different three. It's all good. Especially if Zabu's on the board, you actually have a secondary play where you can play Darkhawk and then you can play something like a Shang-Chi or you can play Enchantress or you can play Rockside. 
Conversely, if you've played your Darkhawk on turn 4 earlier, you can play Rock Slide plus Stature Miles Morales. You can play Enchantress, Stature Miles Morales. You can play Shang-Chi, Stature Miles Morales. At the end of the day, you have Miles Morales and Stature plus whatever your game setup has kind of allowed. And that's what makes this deck so powerful. This Borderline Miracle turn 6, where you're playing a 1-7 and a 1-5 on turn 6 in conjunction with a notable card with either immense power or immense uh, kind of uh, tech capability like Enchantress or Shang-Chi. It's what make this makes this deck so damn good. And if you'd like to join us on Twitch TV, definitely join us. There's going to be a link in the, twi uh, in the description and in the comments. And press the like button if you'd like to support this series. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And I hope you enjoy these gameplay highlights that were recorded live on Twitch. Jeff loves Sandbar. But the thing is, though, we got to move Jeff. So we have to play uh, Jeff here for now. Because we need to activate the Spider-Man Nebula. Okay, I respect it. Where's Zebu? Give me Zebu, damn it. We play the Polaris. Okay, I don't got Killmonger. We have a really good spot here. Jeff moves Sandbar. A Nebula deck won't be able to answer that. We have Stature, Black Bolt. We snap. This is a very straightforward snap here. Turn 5, we move Jeff to Sandbar. We play Black Bolt into the Isle of Silence. We have Stature, Spider-Man. It's very strong, this combination. We're disrupting their... Okay. Lizard's good. Lizard's a very good card there. But now, this is the situation they're in. Jeff here. You can move cards to the location, but why would you want to? Right? We do this to get the edge here. We could also move it, but realistically, we're going to pump that location with multiple cards. And he's not going to want to move Lizard. So there's the movement. Miles goes down. We hit a rock, whatever. Stature drops. Interesting. So they're making it so we can't play there. We run the risk. If he move, he's not going to move the lizard though. It's a lot of power. Stature's really strong here, and he still has to play a card here. We win here. We should win. It's Magento. Yo. Victory. My man got fancy. Be friendly got fancy. And then you know what happened? They got punished. Let's go. Look at this draw. We drew nothing. We drew the entire top of our deck. How does this even happen? Hey. Well, they're clearly going to play there all the time. They're also going to play there all the time. If I can bait them to repeatedly play into this Angela, I think we just win everywhere else. Bishop. If he plays Mysterio right now, he saves the Bishop. I think I try and kill Bishop right now. This Bishop is like, it has to get saved. Wasn't expecting Iron Fist. Okay, I like it. I like what they're playing right now. This is a good deck. I like what you're doing here. You do lose the Bishop, which is really sad for you. Really sad for you. Uh, we go Black Bolt here. Because Darkhawk will be a 10. Which will outpace there. I don't know what we hit, though. Could snap. I think we snap here. I think they leave because they lost Bishop. Without Bishop, Warrior Falls is hard. Rock Slide's big enough, too, that, like, you kind of, like, Hit Monkey would probably have to go into Warrior Falls. Right?
So demon's gone. We go to 16 there. So literally, it's Darkhawk. Korg. So this is only a... It's only six. Doubled. We get to a 12. Yeah, this looks like a retreat on their behalf. They're too wide here. I mean, Jeff's playable, of course, right? But we want to give the extra two to the uh, to the throne room Darkhawk. I'm surprised they're going here. Unless, of course, it's Shang-Chi. But it's not Shang-Chi mid. So we still win. Scary moment there. Shang-Chi is always terrifying. But we still get that dub. Oh, we gotta play Nebula in a Sinister London. Do I Nebula? No, I can't Zabu there too. It's just too much. It's too much. Oh, I can't Zabu there. Oh, right, when I when I rock and hawk this guy, he's gonna be so upset. Is there great fishing in Quebec? I didn't know that. Sentinel Sinister London. Why am I not playing a Ronin list right now? This dude just pumped his hand. You just assaulted your hand. Holla. Holla to your boy. This game's over. I mean, if he plays... No, I should win this game. The problem is, the Black Bolt's going to hit nothing. It's just going to be a big power play. It's Bast. Weird flux. Oh my god. Bro loves Sentinels. My god. What have you done? You're not even going to draw these. Rocks and Hawks is just laughing. I think we Jeff on Sinister London and move them both mid. They're not going to put up 10 points here, right? This guy puts up 10 points. Scarlet Witch, okay. LOL? This game is so on. Could lose right. We want Black Bolt to go mid. Yeah. Iron Man's actually huge. I am Iron Man. Iron Man is so huge. But I pulled their mystique. Oh, do we outpace Darkhawk? Eight. Come on, land. We're adding 16 power here. If he plays Cerebro, we just get our cheeks clapped. And he earns four cubes. Oh my god. Well. That's not going to win. GG though, man. It was C3. He never pulled Cerebro, obviously. I respect, listen, I respect Valkyrie all day long. That's a common question. Between Jeff and High Evo, who do you pick? Man, that's hard to say. Like, I lean towards High Evolutionary just because of the impact it has, but like, I am a Jeff lover. Truly, I'm a Jeff enjoyer. It's a big Star Lord. I don't like my options. I think we just Starcock here. We're going to run up that Nebula to give a potential um, 
So it has to be Black Bolt here, but we don't have a card moving, which is annoying. We can Black Bolt on Machine World. Shang-Chi gives us a very clean win condition. We can also drag the Star-Lord out. Yeah, that's fine. I respect it. I respect it. There's Stature. Unfortunately for us, we didn't get a movement. I think we go for it. He probably attacks. Thinking we can rock slide, he probably leaves the Dark Hawk, right? We probably just, he probably thinks we're going to win there, right? He probably attacks left. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. That's 20 power. Ooh, Groot. Nice, clean win. Mind games, man. When you play as much of this game as I do, you start to really think about how players are going to approach different game states. It's a clean win. No Nebula, big sod. Nebula Zabu is a blessed combination. Loving Miles Morales with Jeff, by the way. Ooh, it's Goose, is it? That's fine for me. It's gonna be hard for you, my friend. I have Zabu on the board, and you just goosed the Nexus? You're gonna have to storm that. Oh! Who's playing Rogue? Plays Rogue! Can you believe it? That rogue is insane because Darkhawk was going to be there in a second. He's still in trouble though because I can sneak Morales in there. He storms it. That's fine. Makes Darkhawk more relevant. He has to move anyway. What are the chances we pull stature here? I think we do this. Okay, pulling stature, very high. We can pull Goose out. Pull Goose. We tie there. Nebula goes down mid as well. I think we go for the eight. Tied. We win here. Tied there. Spider-Man. Stature. All are under nine, by the way. Kang snap. So annoying. He's gone. Okay. It makes sense. It makes sense that he left, honestly. We have a great, great hand here. Krakoa sucks. As long as it plays Black Bolt if we have it, but we do have Nebula, Jeff, Zabu. We have so many options here. It's almost snappable. I think I'm willing to snap here. Nebula, Zabu, Spider-Man, Jeff. Like, this is exactly what we want to start. Krakoa feels really bad, but it's equally bad. They're probably wondering why I snap Krakoa. Okay, it's a Thanos-based list, which makes it easy for him to play into the Nebula. <laughs> Dream Dimension? Oh my god. What a cursed game. Krakoa and Dream Dimension. Unbelievable.
Now I can't soul stone on this uh, Zabu. Okay, they just proc to free uh, Morales for us. Got rid of the Krakoa. Onslaught if Citadel. Me to infinite this season, one switch to bagged milk for Let's life. go. Bagged milk? Let's go! If bagged milk's getting you to infinite, I got good news for you, friend. Canada is full of bagged milk. I, I don't want him to know I have Dark Hawk yet. Hate the idea of stuffing our deck a little bit. We didn't have to do this. I want him to have to challenge this location. He snaps. We're gonna have a free Spider-Man Morales and Darkhawk. He snaps, goes turn four, goes to four next turn. We're going to an eight uh, cube game here. I want him to have to contest. Yeah. So he has a huge Thanos. But he's pumping his deck hard. I think it's Onslaught Citadel Morales. If he plays Thanos left, I just win. He does have one extra mana though, doesn't he? Let's go for the eight. It's left. Oh, this friggin' Kang snaps. You gotta be kidding me with these Kang snaps. So sick of this already. We've had multiple Kang snaps tonight. It takes so much out of the game. It just takes so much out of the game. You know? He's gone. We still get four cubes. We still get four cubes. The Kang snap's a little frustrating, but like obviously we, we're putting up a ton of power here.